Hey guys, the Spirit Centered Business Podcast is moving one hour earlier, so we'll be featured at 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursday nights. We'll see you there. Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here is your host, Berlin Newby. And I'm mainly speaking for myself, you know. <laughs> no worries. Well, hello there. Welcome back to Spirit Center Business. We're in part two with the next stagers. We've got Daniel Levitt and Martin Smith and possibility of someone else joining us along the way. But um, obviously it's still hat day. Daniel started it and I said, that looks really cool. I'm wearing mine too. So <laughs> that's where we are. If you missed part one, go ahead and go to spiritcenterbusiness.com and click the podcast button over there or wherever you're listening to the podcast uh, on the, we're syndicated across the Fringe Radio Network. So we're on Spotify and iHeartRadio and iTunes and everything and all of our podcasts are. And so a big shout out to Fringe Radio Network. So thank you guys over there, Michael Basham and uh, Johnny Iron. Yeah, thanks to you guys. So uh, let me see. Oh, housekeeping bit. So uh, we have the the holiday special, and I only call it holiday because there are so many holidays, not because I don't want to say Christmas, because I will say Christmas, Christmas, Christmas all day long. But the holiday special on Spirit Centered Business is the fusion sessions that are going on right now, which is blending spiritual and business coaching with a seer. And those are on the special and you can find them over on spiritcenterbusiness.com and check out the store. And I think that's all of the housekeeping that I need to do. Okay. So in part one, we were talking about the year in review and Martin and Daniel shared what they had to let go of and the things, the downloads that God was pressing into. I shared a little bit of some of the, the things that I was press, pressing into and some of the amazing uh, testimonies that my clients have had and the things that the Lord was showing me what we can do that affects, uh, it, do in the spirit realm that really affects the, the 3D realm. But I didn't get to share the, some of the things that I had to let go of. And, and I think this was a big, big heartbreaking lesson for me. So that's just why I want to share it, because it might help someone else. Is um, at the beginning of the year, in, I, I was taken off of two platforms in March and then again in May. And so these were, this was a big deal for my business. And I really felt like, I had, uh, it was, it had been such a big God. Yes. And I got so many confirmations of yes. So when the no came, it was a big, um, you know, a big deal. Uh, it, it felt really hard. However, uh, the second, the second one, I got the knife taken out of my back, like within hours. And let me tell you guys, I didn't have to go down into the dark night of the soul like I would have in previous times when you get the rug pulled out from under you, you know, your knees knocked out. So while it was a big, huge hit to my business and financially and all of that kind of stuff, I was able to come through it with my spirit centered. And so my spirit was able to really minister to my soul. And I got over soul woundings, including even witchcraft curses that got sent against me because of all of this stuff. And, you know, that's a whole nother long story, but I was even able to weather that kind of stuff and stay with the Lord and just give it to Jesus and just know that he's my provider. He's my protector. And I was able to hold on to that. And so the big lesson that I want to share is you know, when the grace for a situation moves off, sometimes it can be a traumatic, big thing. You just have to stay with the Lord, stay in his love, stay trusting that this wasn't a surprise to him, even though it's a total paradigm shift, like what happened to my world to you? It's not a surprise to the Lord. And that was, that was my 
my big aha, like, okay, so his hand lifted off of this, but where is it now? And so I'm kind of in this little bit of finding out where he has his hand now to make sure that I'm postured correctly and positioned correctly the way that he needs me to be in this time, this point on my timeline and in this time and season in human history and all of that. And, but I never felt like I could see his hand here and then kind of here. It wasn't like here and then gone and then lift. You know what I mean? I kind of just always felt him through it because I stayed with my spirit forward in that. And I just want to encourage anyone else who's going through a transition or where they got the rug knocked out from under you. And Martin, you're actually, um, you know, transitioning out of a job that I think that you, it wasn't that long that you've had that job, right? No, no. Yeah. So, so you might've gotten through a, a bit of a gut punch too, that you've <laughs> had to deal with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only about two weeks ago. Yeah, so yours is fresh. So Lord, just send Holy Spirit salve into all those places that got hit. Whew. Yeah, so that that would be my big, um, what I had to let go of was just trusting the Lord and that I don't, um, that the positioning, I when I try to position myself, it's not going to work or, or it's going to work to a, only to a certain extent. But his but good is not God's grace, right? Or God, not God's plan. And so I had to let go of, even though it had been confirmed and I do believe it was a God thing, it was for a totally entirely different reason. You know, I moved from California to North Carolina for this thing and all of a sudden it's gone. And I'm like, okay, Lord. So clearly you just needed me out of California. So why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah, that would be my big, uh, my big, what I learned in, this year. Yeah. So on that, if you don't mind, so what, did, what sure. did you feel like you had to give up? I mean, there were, it sounds like there were things that were almost given up for you. If you yeah, know. well, no, I had to give up my reliance on, wow, if I don't, if I'm not on these other platforms, I won't be okay. Got it. I had to give up that and just know that God had me and it's really about God's platform and God's um, promotion and God's um, creating the the uh, momentum and, and everything in my life so it was it was that it was I was really trying to ride a horse at, and I felt like God gave me the horse and, and I think that he did but then all of a sudden I don't have a horse. Okay, Lord, I'm walking and I'm going to have to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's powerful. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So now let's step into, if you guys don't mind, what's new, what's next, what's the Lord telling you for the next year? Daniel, go ahead. Yeah, that is a good question. I am with you and, and about praying, where is your hand of blessing? Because I want to move with the Lord. You know, it's kind of like that picture of like the Israelites going through the wilderness, you know, the cloud lifts and okay, we're moving, you know, <laughs> just keeping your eyes on Jesus, you know, and so that's, I mean, honestly, that's, that's where we all ought to be of like, I don't know. But here's the thing. I, I have this wonderful scripture that that so encourages me. Because I believe that Jesus is inviting us into the wild freedom of like abundant life in the spirit. And there's this, this, this verse in the, in the message translation, Eugene Peterson, God love him. Uh, he, he phrases uh, Romans 8, 15 this way. He says, the resurrection life you received from God is not a timid grave tending life. It's adventurously expectant greeting God with a childlike what's next papa mm. and I just love that that phrase just just resonates in me what's next papa you know mm. so like what where he has me right now I'm you know I'm I've been writing a book for three years it's it's actually been mostly done for three years why hasn't it been completed well uh for for because I'm not as completed as I want to be. I, I want to not be a hypocrite when I put this stuff out. I want to live it. I want to walk it. You know, it's the, the book originally was called The Christian Mystic. And my wife would be like, 
well, why don't you get more Christian mystical? You know, like what? <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, you know, because God rewards those who diligently seek him. There is that adventurous, expectant, you know, you know, not a grave tending life, but a resurrection life that we can all, uh, we can all uh, dive into. There's God's no respecter of persons. Each is available to each one of us every day. So it's the matter of, okay, today I'm pursuing you. I'm seeking you. I'm praying into this. I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith. Uh, captain, my captain, you know, where are we going? What's next, Papa? And, and, and it is exciting. Um, I've been trying to rewrite chapter one for the last couple of weeks and just spending hours in the chapter one of my book, trying to just get it just right, just so, but also just reflecting on what am I saying here? What is this? And it's all about the love of the father. It's all about receiving that love that transforms, you know, because we love because he first loved us. If I'm going to be a Christian, you know, like a little Christ, I need to like completely and the Lord taught me about this, about what, what it means to fear the Lord. He taught me about this one morning. I woke up and we were going to be leading worship that morning at church. And, and, and he, you know, which was a kind of a rare thing um, at, that, at that time to, to have that opportunity. Um, and, and he says, Daniel, I'm going to teach you today about what it means to fear the Lord. I'm like, okay. You know, and, and, and it didn't give me nothing else until I got to church. And I'm sitting there and praying before the service. And he says, it's like what John said when he says, I must decrease so that you may increase. So it's like, it's, it's becoming so small, like, like Saul became Paul, which means little, he became little so that God and Jesus Christ could loom large in his life, you know, and that's what he taught me. And I, so I totally just took this, this backseat of like, just, I'm saying nothing apart from what you give me to speak. I'm doing nothing unless I see you doing it. You know, just how Jesus lived his life. He was so little. There wasn't a littler man than, than Jesus because he just let the father loom large in his life. He was almost like a nobody. He just let the father express. If you've seen me, you've seen the father, he says, right? And so we're all called to this level of humility, you know, and, and God Resist the proud, but it gives grace to the humble. Like Moses, you know, was was called the, the, the humblest man on planet Earth at the time. And so God was able to use him mightily just because he let God loom large through his life. He spoke what Father gave him to speak. And let, except for that, you know, an occasion or two where he met, actually just one, one occasion that I can think of where he misrepresented God and expressed anger when God wasn't angry. He, he was so much more long suffering than Moses ever dreamed of, you know, and he lost the privilege of going into the promised land because of it, you know? So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm writing a book and, and, and the Lord's writing me as I write the book, you know, and it's, and it, and he actually told me to name it the mystic one because my target audience really is not Christians. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm all about, um, connecting to the new age tribe that's what i really want to do mm -hmm. and and speak christ into that into those scenarios and and god and recognizing jesus is telling me i'm interested in building bridges not burning them yes. so like okay jesus how can we build a bridge today with this person i meet or whatever it may be mm -hmm. or through this book how can i build a bridge into a love encounter with with father and with jesus primarily Jesus being the incarnation of the Father's heart, Jesus being the gate through which we experience Father. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way, the Jedi way, right? He's our master Jedi, and we're all Padawans, you know, disciples. That's how the Bible phrases it. We're all disciples. Well, I definitely encourage you to get that book written because people need to read it, and it doesn't. Don't worry about if it's perfect. Yeah. And let go of the hypocrite spirit, just let go. Yeah. Just, just the book is what it is, and you can write another one that refutes some of the things. You know, this is what I said uh, six months ago, and now I have bigger revelation, and it's okay. I just want to release you to to do that. It's it's yeah. all good. Thank you.
You're welcome. I'm in the same boat, actually, because I started my second book in uh, 2019. And now I'm picking it. Well, not now, but uh, over the years, I've picked it up and going, well, I don't even think this way anymore. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is like, well, still write it with that flavor, because there are people who are still back in that mindset of where you were at that time. And yes, you've grown three years, but that's where they need to see the, the revelation at that point. So I'm like, okay, well, you're going to have to help me because I don't even speak that language anymore. Hmm. So yeah. anyway, I totally get that. Yeah, so uh, Michael Basham is kind of in the house. In Michael. The house. <laughs> um oh you say he says hi guys i love you all my connection may be bad okay well we would love to have Let's you on camera it. if possible it's gonna be really choppy can you at least hear me yes hi oh, there you too hi nice to see you okay. <laughs> really amazing i love all of you guys i'm sorry i haven't uh i didn't I thought we were scheduled for two, but we um we have a project going on right now that everything that Daniel just said is like exactly what I'm learning. Um, just it's just becoming small and letting God do everything. And you feel lazy because we want to accomplish things, and I want to get chickens and more chickens and um, conquer the universe. And Ian Clayton <laughs> makes one galaxy; chickens. I'll make a hundred galaxies. Can you Bash hear me? Him, you're, you're, you're conquering with chickens? What? Yeah, right? <laughs> conquering we'll the, over the world one chicken at a time. <laughs> the chicken army. <laughs> yes. All right, Michael, thank you for and being here. I want to thank you guys for, for supporting. I love you guys. It's just great. I'll, I'll be listening. I think um, you guys have a lot more to, to say, but I just think we're just servants of God and the kingdom. And I mean, you guys have blessed me so much. and. I'm trying to pay it forward. Uh, we're going to try to, we aren't trying to, we have send shortwave radio into China at this time, as China is in this amazing revolution. And God had me with Omega Man start these Chinese kind of reading the New Testament in Chinese. And we're just seeing it from Palau into all of China now. And I don't need to feel anything but pride. It's just like, what? you can use me right okay and so we're just doing these and my chinese is understandable it's like me talk to jesus, you believe jesus bible do you read you know but we've already gone through the beatitudes and he gave me like you know if he can use me he can use anybody like we just we all have different things to bring and there's not a contest it's not a cult of a personality um i'll sometimes almost quit the shows when I just have so much going on with my family and then I'll get a message like oh I just found your show and oh you just really blessed me and I'm a new Christian and I've been listening to your grandfather and and then it's like oh crap I got to keep doing this and then I see you know your support and I just you know it's it's so amazing what God can do if we're just all bringing whatever we have to the table and being willing to let him do it and not you know push our way through so that's just what i wanted to share i love y'all michael we I love my you interviews too. awesome yeah so martin what's new for you stepping into the new year yeah so uh, a lot of new things and, and i i love what michael was saying on just really being who you are and stepping into you know not not worrying about other things but just really just being yourself and that's that's been a a bit of a journey for me on on really coming into my own, I would say, and it's taken me much longer than I had expected. Uh, but I feel like I'm just now starting to come into my own. Um, so in <clears throat> in September, I started a new group and a new venture uh, doing identity coaching, and it was not something I'd heard anybody talk much about. Um, and something that's obviously been passionate, a passion of mine for many, many years now. And so some friends of mine have been doing coaching, uh, obviously Berlin, you and I had talked about coaching years ago and writing a book and you yeah. know, that's, it takes a while. So, uh, finally have stepped into this and I started with my identity foundation, uh, program and it's a eight week course. 
that really walks you through the whole of scripture, old, old covenant, new covenant, and helping release people legally through scripture to freedom in Christ. And really then helping them understand, you know, how do we walk in Christ in absolute total freedom and unconditional love, and then understanding who he has already made us to be. And that's really that the core of that space. And it goes through heavy, heavy scripture towards the beginning. And then we move into more in the encounters and the guided meditations, because the truth of the matter is, is that knowledge doesn't change us, right? I can have all the knowledge in the world and not be changed, whatever. But my experiences change us. And in fact, I just did a, a teaching on this last night with the group on how your uh, your thoughts have emotions that are attached to it. So every thought I have has an emotion that's attached to it, right? And that can be fear. So, you know, for example, I just, you know, found out, hey, my company is no longer funding what we're doing two weeks ago. And so the thoughts of that produces the emotion of anxiety, right? That's just a natural outcome. But what happens is that anxiety within my my thoughts and my body, the emotions triggers my physiological body to produce hormones and chemicals and neurotransmitters that then affect my physiological body. So yes. it's like it's rewriting software that produces a hardware, i.e. flesh and bone, and it impacts my body. And this is where identity really, really falls into place because if if I can settle my thoughts and actually understand my emotions and get those grounded into identity, it's actually reprogramming our bodies to health, to wealth. And then as our body physiologically changes, it's like we've got this Wi-Fi signal that's starting to be broadcast from an identity perspective and other people can connect to it. Other people can hear it like music and they're drawn to it and it begins changing everything around us. And so this is really where, you know, I'm moving with the identity coaching is to give people that foundation, but now let's go practically exercise and work within it so that you're, you're operating from our identity and really from where we are in the throne. And it's an incredible, incredible piece. And so I've just been stepping into that. We just finished our first eight week course with a, an amazing group of people. And we're about to start our, uh, our next course, which is going to be early January. And I'm doing a couple of fun uh, little retreats and teaching on this with, you know, about the, how the body responds. And then we're actually going to do the body response with identity. So it's a mix of, you know, the knowledge and the education, but then also the practicality of it and how we actually do it. So part of that. Go ahead is also, and do your shameless plug. We'll put. Oh we'll put yes, your... yes, the shameless plug. <laughs> so uh, the shameless plug. If uh, if you want to connect, um, I've started a Facebook group called Identity uh, Identity Coaching. So it's uh, Identity Coaching Group on Facebook, or you can look up just me on, under Martin Smith, and I always have links into that. Um, and or you can send me an email at martin at identitycoachinggroup.com. Or you can also look me up on Facebook. Right now, my uh, channel is The Flying Penguins. And I've got a lot of material and, and things out there. And so we're, we're posting a lot of those things. So uh, that's where you can do that. And I'm also in the process of taking the eight-week course and condensing it into a book um, that others can buy, as well as an online version only of that. So really trying to look at uh, multiple opportunities for folks that want to do either one-on-one -on -one or group coaching or you can also look at a subscription model uh, that we've uh, we offer now within the identity coaching group that you can be on live zoom and be asking questions uh, as we go or if you're not in the subscription you'll just get the live zoom and just not able to interact uh, so really looking at how do we serve and minister to all people uh, from those who are not able to do much of anything, but also for those who are able to do quite a bit and really go deeper uh, within it. So it's exciting. Uh, there's a lot of unknown, especially because with my uh, with my previous company, and there's still maybe some opportunities for funding, but um, 
there's there's a, the unknown is kind of where I am and so it's mm-hmm. like I can either just sit back and be like oh you know what's what's happened why did all this happen to me mm-hmm. which you know, it's funny the pressure is squeezing out some of that poo if you will on mm-hmm. oh I haven't fully rested an identity into this area of my life yet and so okay father thank you for that revelation now let's let's go into your love a little bit deeper and so it's learning to trust in more of that unknown and learning to really let go of that, you know, I've, I've, I have to do X, Y, and Z. And so it's, uh, it's an exciting time. It's a stressful time uh, at the same time, but I feel like I'm also coming into really who I am and, and what I'm supposed to be doing with this. And that's, that's exciting for me. And, and more so I'm, you know, I'm watching the people that have interacted and it's, it is truly changing lives. Um, and that's, that's what it's all about being able to do those types of things. So yeah, identity coaching, that's, that's the the latest and greatest venture. So that fun. is so exciting, Martin. I'm so glad that you're finally launching because you are brilliant and you've got yeah. so much great stuff to share. So yay. Good Thank job. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I know, right, Michael? Exactly. All right. So, so Michael, since you're a uh, new kid on the block, as far as this show um, episode goes, what is new and what are you pressing into for the new year? What new revelation or new, uh, whatever, whatever's new for you? And you're muted. We are, um, there you go. Presently talking to a lot of different ministries and triangulating and i would love to support and to somehow if we can promote martin's training courses because i think we need more and not less of this right now there's going to be a huge influx of new believers um i've spent this last year just meeting all kinds of people of all walks of life on tiktok which sounds so embarrassing and stupid but they're out there and they're all new baby christians because they just realized that when they were locked in their homes, they're like, man, Netflix is really bad. And they're teaching our kids really horrible things. So just read, like putting my voice on those toilet bowl platforms. I'm just getting like, even with my small following, I'm still getting like a a huge response. And it's leading me to think, well, we've, I can't even handle all these people. Like they're just, they have so much to share and we need to somehow like have some sort of community like where i could pass people to someone else or you know where it's like oh you need training go check out martin smith's training courses oh you need here's my friend paula mingucci that i just went on a show with and how do we do it because i was in a lot of different you say kind of culty ministries that were real ministry real christian ministries but you know they had the control and the nitpicking and i don't like it when you did that and I think that what, what God is showing me as of this last few weeks is that we really need to start engaging with wisdom and not just like, dear Jesus, give me wisdom. Amen. But like really asking for discernment and making the essentially supernatural, celestial, heavenly entity that the Bible talks about wisdom, a part of your life. And what she does is she brings all kinds of knowledge of witty inventions riches wealth how to handle money and just all the wisdom of the bible the proverbs talk about it but really what god is showing me now is to just take the humble seat and let god's wisdom which is an external thing which neville johnson saw the crowns of solomon being retrieved from the kingdom of darkness and presented to the end time church which I believe we are, and that that is an external gift, not an internal thing. So when God gives you the wisdom, you're going to be like, no, no, I already know this. I know that. No, 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 you don't, you don't really know. And it's a long story. I'm going to publish these documents. I don't, I'm not at the place where I can write a book yet, but you know how you you use Substack or whatever. I was going to do something and I realized they're banning people on that too. And I just can't keep my mouth shut. So I'm going to just write stuff on my website, faith bucks called the spirit force white papers, which will be these visions, prophecies, prayers, even other people's things too, and try to publish one, like one or two a week. And, um, 
one of these big am i breaking up no i was just gonna say this shameless plug you mentioned faithbucks.com is that correct yeah i put that behind uh, <laughs> i had to learn html to even just have a website because i got i got banned over and over again <clears throat> but um I, I one of my projects that i'm thinking about doing with this is so i can show like oh i had this engagement wisdom i don't want to just talk about it i want to write it down or it. it would be so cool from matt evans or let's say a ruthie andrews or any of your brilliant facebook posts that kind of get stuck only to facebook but I was, it would be really cool to like, if anybody has like a few paragraphs of a thought or a, or a vision or a prayer that we could kind of like bring some of those together. And because wisdom took me into like this garden of a replica of the garden of Eden. And there were trees of unlearning of knowledge of good and evil, like taking you back to the innocence of your very being. I mean, we've never been without sin except through faith in Jesus Christ. But what if you could actually experience true innocence and true just clean slate, zero accusation, zero condemnation? And she was showing this to me and just giving me these different fruits. And I was just like, wow, oh, I feel great. And, you know, and then you're relearning everything. And it would, it would take hours to go through that. But so I, my, this concept of the spirit force is we're all part of God's army and we all have stuff to share and bring and to build each other up. So it's still in development. I've only kind of messily shared one of these things so far, but we're going to get in gear with that. I've got literally tens of thousands of pages of just journals and stuff that I think we need to start releasing. New weapons, you name it. But I, you know, maybe in the, few, in the coming months, we could try to help uh, promote more of these different ministries. Uh, revelation, uh, the Rev Revelator, Paula Mangucci, her stuff, Martin Smith, business game changers have some way, everybody except for Daniel, of course, I'm just kidding. Um, we could have some way to like share some of this in like a one minute broadcast commercial because I still go live several times a week. Um, anyway, yeah, that's that's where I'm at, just engaging with wisdom and same thing, writing, not quite at a book level yet, but writing is definitely something he's releasing. Well, contact me if you right. need help with anything. I also have my uh, agency, my team in the in the Philippines that we can, you know, leverage. So, yeah, do that. Awesome. Oh, well, I have my people well, in, uh, you know, Croatia, I, of course. You know. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> I will. <You're> so funny. <laughs> um okay so so for me um martin you're singing my song you know obviously identity and also i love the way that you're talking about pulling it through the dimensions because our body is the expression of what's going on in the spirit realm right and i love the way you described it that was all brilliant so what i have been working on um you guys probably know that i started a new show called the nth degree we started it almost seven months ago, I think, or so ish with Donna Nieper. And we talk about the things that don't always get talked about. And you, people don't have conversations about these deeper things of God, the mysteries of God and the intimacy with God and father and, and those kinds of things. So that's the nth degree with Donna. And she and I are designing a, a, a big program that we want to focus on identity and legacy and the the vehicle that we're using to get to identity and legacy is going to encompass all three spirit soul and body we've been researching a lot of new technologies in um, bio chemistry uh, peptide therapies uh, different um, biohacks to bring our body into alignment with the, the our, not only our original design, but also to be able to handle the destiny that he's called us to do for a longer period of time and increase our health span as well as our lifespan. So, so 
when we understand our identity and how we can operate as sons and kings and trees of righteousness and cosmic beings and all of the different facets of our identity, what does that look like? And how do we walk out our legacy on earth? And how are we impacting the world for the kingdom of God? And how are we literally bringing heaven to earth and making it be something real and tangible and and life giving and and a force to be reckoned with and you know increasing the influence that we have on the earth as sons and not taking territory you know not only just market share but also in in government sphere and in education sphere and on all of that and it comes down to do we have our physical body ready to do the work and so once we understand who we are, we're like, oh, wow, well, I have spent decades uh, really mistreating the temple here. So how do I reverse that and move into the more of the design that the Lord had for us and using the elements of the earth, you know, to to fuel ourselves and to, you know, pump us up and even there's some technologies that do include things that are not necessarily what we're designed with. And I, and I, and I don't know how much we're going to be pressing into that. There are a lot of moral issues and ethics that it are going to be coming up in the medical profession, especially, you know, we already had a lot of discussions. Oops, Michael dropped off. That's okay. We've already had a lot of discussions about stem cell research and, you know, those of us who are in the know about what they do with, uh, embryos and and babies and and all of that kind of stuff. It's a it's a sticky wicket. But our you know our, if our loved one is is dying and or having a terrible quality of life, are we going to see if the Lord wants us to do these kinds of therapies and these kinds of things? So there's a lot of there's a lot of depth of of conversation that needs to be had around these things and so we want to provide not only a platform to learn about them but a learn to, but a community to be able to have conversations that we're not only talking black and white here there's there's so much and what does the lord want in this situation because potentially it's unique and it's not the same for this other situation which through the bible he he showed that that is all is the case and that you know because on one side is you know love your parents and then the, the other side is you know hate your hate your mother and father so it's like well hold on what's the truth and like well what's the truth for this situation for this time for me for you know everything so there's we're working on something like that we we're continuing to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching and but then we realize that that's not always affordable for everyone and that's why we're creating the program that people can walk through in a group level and then we're also creating a a, a you know by application only kind of a curated people who are operating and leadership and influencing positions in the top of business or government mountains who are kingdom and so we want to create a mastermind kind of a place where they can have high level conversations that also include kingdom concepts you know there's there's multiple places where um leaders can get together and have high level you know business or or even it, personal issues that you just don't share with people who aren't understanding what that C-suite kind of mentality is or, or, you know, whatever, but also pressing into the, the mysteries of the Lord and wow, how can we take this further and how can we impact our, you know, organization in a way that really shows father to the masses and shows his design for this organization. So we're pressing into those things. It's very, very exciting. And I hope we hope to be rolling that out March, April ish, uh, depending on what the next couple months look like as far as uh, us fleshing it out. 
That's really cool, really. I, I love the the biohacking, and I've, I've I know I've dipped my toe in some of that and done some things myself, and it's like wow, there's 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 a lot to it. I mean, it's there's legit. a lot to it. Oh, it's not just it's yeah. not just you know booga booga stuff. It's like no, there this is this is legit stuff. So right. man, I'm excited for you. That that's really cool. Yeah. And, and using even AI technology to, for diagnosing and treating and mm. amplifying and doing that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of, um, like I said, ethical and moral discussion that needs to happen. And like, I, is this what you want, Lord, or am I pressing into things that just, that are not on my shelf? And I think we, we mentioned in, in part yeah. one, uh, there's just things that he's not pressing me into. So I'm not going to go down that road. And, and it's, it's not, and, and that's fine. And it's okay. You know, so if there's some things that like, oh, wow, this medical treatment really looks cool, but the Lord says, mm, not right now, or not in this situation or not, you know, for you or whatever, we have to be obedient to that and not just get all starry eyed with how glittery it looks, right? Shiny, something shiny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I'm excited for you. That's, I think we need that, especially, especially linked into Christ and identity. I mm -hmm. think those are some of those missing pieces. There's great scientific stuff going, but without the, the fullness of the spirit and identity in Christ, I think it's it's really I think you're hitting on it. There's the ethical moral pieces that we just don't even consider. Um, yeah, well, even hmm. even the, the infertility clinics, you know, now we learn it's it's heartbreaking if a couple is trying to be get pregnant and they can't, and so they go to these infertility clinics, and then there's like a moral thing. I, I even know people close to me who who had a after the fertility, it had a bunch of embryos. Well, you get to only choose one at the moment. So what do you do with the other ones? It's like, ah, you know, total um, go on tilt with some of those things. And, and we know what the enemy does with those, those other ones. And we don't need to get into that discussion, but it's, it's not good. It's nefarious. And there are literal you know, whole processes of, of these things that are going on. And we don't want to feed all of that so yeah there's it's a big discussion and it's uh and michael you will have to just watch the replay to find out what we're talking about because <laughs> you dropped off but we're glad that you're back even it audio only is fine <laughs> yeah just to change the subject a little bit back to something you said earlier about taking care of our temple you know i, I had an awakening experience Braylon, I know we talked about that on a previous occasion. It was probably two years ago now. But but one of the first things I did after my awakening experience was want to have a salad for breakfast, you know, and you just eat a lot of veggies and, yeah. you know, go for runs to, you know, taking good care of your body mm -hmm. um, the, the temple, because we are hosting something really marvelous here. And, and even, uh, you know, just, just leaning into the gifts of the Holy Spirit like the gift of healing. You know, yeah. this is something I'm reminded of um, John Wimber, who um, was like the founder of the Vineyard Church Movement. He went after healing because he felt the Lord wanted him to. And for an entire solid year, it was like, okay, we're going to pray for healing after every service. We're going after this. Yeah. And and even saw negative results, like people would get sicker, some would die you know, for an entire year until he was like, I am so frustrated with this. I want to give up. And somebody called him up and said, Hey, can you come over and pray for my wife? She needs to look after the kids so I can go to work, you know, and, and, and things. And she's like really ill. And he goes over there. He's not expecting anything. Prays a simple prayer. And, and is about to turn to explain like why these things don't often, you know, you know, healings don't always happen and whatever. And, but then she's like miraculously healed. She just jumps out of bed completely well after, you know, it's like the Lord wants to see build within us a capacity with our persistence. Ask and keep on asking, Jesus says. It's implied in the Greek and you will receive. So earnestly desire spiritual gifts like the gift of healing, you know, and, and specific. I want to see 
like the gift of miracles going after those gifts of the spirit i think is really key uh yeah. in this awakening as well and and i think that that's one of the things that we're called to as maturing sons i sorry Ed martin i didn't mean to mute you um Basham was having a little issue there. But as we're called to, into maturing sons, we're going to have to understand how to do these, what we call miracles, but they're, they're, they're technologies that were common at some point. And, you know, Jesus said, we'll do these and more. Well, how would he know that unless, you know, he knew that we could do it? So yeah, yeah go I'll, ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll offer one little, uh, experience of my own I, I had a problem with my ear at one point it would like at a certain volume it would just go, fritz out it just like go you know just static oh, yeah and and uh, like one night I woke up and I went like out of body and I and I observed like this this blue being hovering over my body working on my ear you know and I'm like and then I came back into my body and woke up and I'm like freaking out like this thing is still here in the room and, and I said, you know, if you're not from Jesus, be God in Jesus name or whatever. And, and, but if you're here on the Lord's business, carry on, right. you know, so like, <laughs> carry on. like, and, and literally my ear, my ear got better. Like I was wow. receiving a, like a divine heavenly surgery, but just because of my willingness to even to receive that, like the Lord knew like, okay, you know, just like being open to not cursing ourselves, you know, I, <laughs> like, like forgiveness will heal the world, forgiving yourself, you know, to, to be able to receive divine surgeries, you know, uh, from the angelic host of heaven, which I talk, I, I love talking about. I, I do too. Heaven. Maybe we need to have a whole other show, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just, to, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but I had something kind of similar. Right. And I was like, okay, this is way outside my grid. And I was like, okay, if you're not aligned to love, if you're not aligned to Jesus, you know, then, then I asked you to leave. And <laughs> these guys, they kind of pat me on the head. It was like, you're cute. You know, yeah. <laughs> it was just right. like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to be that way. But it was, it was so, there was so much love and forgiveness and joy. And it was just like, it was, it was hilarious. Cause it was like, you're cute. You don't get it. You know, you're like a little child that just doesn't understand any of this. And I was like, yeah, but you know, but it was, and they're like, yes, we are of course aligned to the love of the father. And so it was just, it was funny, but yeah, that you reminded me of that when you said it. Yeah. I've had some, some crazy experiences, encounters, and I'm sure that I've talked about them on other shows, but um, the, the very short version is I, I had worked with, um, someone who we were working on spirit realm stuff and we saw there were iterations of myself like there were there were um what, what how would you say it like a reinstating or reinstalling program had been put on so whenever i cleaned something out it would get reinstalled and so there was iterations on the bloodline and in me inside me that were causing problems in my physical body. And so when I went to bed that night, I told, I had my spirit, I, I walked into the healing rooms of heaven and I checked myself in and I said, spirit, you're going to be staying here all night. And I'm going to check in on you every time I wake up. And I have a tendency to wake up a lot during the night. So, um, you know, the first time I woke up, I saw that I was in like a float tank and I was having the frequency just inundated with frequency of divine healing and divine health in me. And then the next time I woke up, I was, I may have been in that flow tank, but they were specifically taking wands and putting the frequency of heaven over my wrists and hands because I was having some wrist and hand issues. So they were doing that. Then the next time I woke up was when I started seeing little icons of myself like little pictures and they were they were in a grid but the edges of the grid was kind of amorphic and I saw it all full of these little iterations of myself and I knew that my spirit and the angels that were working with my spirit were working on getting rid of the iterations and sure enough the next few times I woke up there were fewer and fewer and fewer and by right before I woke up for good in the morning there was just some in a few little corners like this well, when I woke up, I had a massive headache and I could barely get to the bathroom fast enough before I was thrown up. I'm like, Lord, what is this? And he goes, it was a healing response. 
So all the work that they wow. we had done in the spirit realm was coming through into my body and just letting go of all of that stuff. So like, oh, this is real. Yeah, wow, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll look at my migraines and, and nausea and vomiting a little differently after that story, bro. Right. <laughs> like maybe, yeah, it's like, father, what is going on? You know, that's, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be tuned in to, to know, at least have a clue of, of like, Hey, he's, he's got good things for you. You know, you might be interpreting this poorly. Yeah. yeah. Here, here's the other side of that. Yeah. Speaking of migraines and let me just jump off on the medical side a second. I discovered after I'm a, I'm a researcher and an investigator and stuff like that too. And I discovered that the, the migraine, the, the, the neuro people always, you know, want to deal with it, but it's not actually a neuro issue because our brain doesn't have any receptors for pain. It can't do pain. What's going on is actually a heart issue. And it's the, it's the nerves that are wrapped around the blood vessels in your brain. And when your heart is pumping really hard or really heavy, those nerves are like getting squished and squeezed and stuff like that. And that's what's causing the pain of the migraine. So when you can deal with the heart issue, maybe it's a pressure, maybe it's a, a pumping, I, who knows what that heart issue is, then it will help the migraine. Anyway, wow. tidbit, <laughs> thought I'd throw that in there free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I remember at one time I went into church uh, with a migraine and I didn't even go in the sanctuary yet. I, I was out on the foyer and there's this te television and it's the worship coming off of the TV screen. And I just like tuned into it for a moment and all of a sudden just like waves of glory. My migraine was just gone instantly. Wow. You know, and um, a heart I, yeah, I think uh, that, that's very interesting too. And just even like, I remember another time, you know, I was having a migraine and my, my wife just started rubbing my back and it's just like my attention, my focus went to that and just, and, and I, the migraine was gone, you know? And then every time she'd stop, the migraine was just like, uh, you know, come back. Mm. I'm just like, keep rubbing my back forever. <laughs> right. It's amazing. Like a dog. Don't stop. Don't stop. And yeah, then exactly. you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, this has been really good. I think we need to land the plane though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so appreciate you guys being willing to share and, and uh, you know, what's going on in your world and what's coming up next for you. So once again, we have uh, Daniel, your YouTube channel is the best place to get people yeah. to in touch with Just you. Find it and subscribe. Would you? It's a. It's called Awakening with Daniel Lovett, mm -hmm. and I've got a lot of lovely interviews on there. Um, some with William Paul Young. That's one of my favorite interviews I did with, great with stuff him. On there. Yep. Um, some other fun topics, you know, and uh, near death experience uh, interviews and very yeah. cool. So we're gonna. I'm hoping to just like launch in, in in a brand new healthy way uh, in the new year. Um, with some some doing some interviews again, I kind of took a, a big hiatus from Facebook and off off of that for two years, basically. And my YouTube channel, I just kind of was doing just little live things by myself, you know, late at night, you know, just channeling heaven. <laughs> I, I, I love I love using that language because I'm like, I'm totally tuning in to the host of heaven. What do you have for me, Jesus? And it's really fun. It's fun what comes through. And a lot of it has been even like personal healing for myself. So it mm -hmm. might even be like for a very small niche audience, but I didn't even care. I didn't even care about how big my, my, my reach was because it was just like very uh, personal and, you know, real, just raw. It, it, it was really fun actually. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the stuff yeah. I was doing on there, but anyway. Very good. And Martin, you are at uh, identitycoachinggroup.com yeah. that you, people can get you at martin at <laughs> identitycoachinggroup.com and also look for Identity Coaching Group on Facebook and get a hold of you there. And of course, I have uh, spiritcenterbusiness.com and uh, the nth degree. And we're pushing people more toward Rumble for the nth degree just because we think that potentially we're going to get off of youtube and like all of us get are going to get pushed off of youtube in the in the main channel so we've got 
you know, MeWe and Telegram and, and Clout Hub and, and those kinds of things going on as well. So you can find both of my shows, Spirit Center Business and The Nth Degree, on any podcast platform, thanks to Fringe Radio Network. Thanks, guys. And Michael Basham was actually part of that. So, uh, hey, shout out to you again, Michael. Okay, you guys, I think that it's time to get this plane taxiing into the gate. So, thanks. And Merry Christmas. You know, yeah. this show will be right before Christmas airing. So, yeah, Merry Christmas to you and your family. I hope you can get together and have lots of love. And um, I'm just going to pray that the drama, and all of the chaos and confusion and frustration that sometimes family brings when they get together is banned in Jesus name. Here we go. Amen. <laughs> all right, you guys. Until next time, stay spirit centered. Peace out. Bye. Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next stage of doing business by being spirit-centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.